the total population of Sri Lanka is nearly two crores, one third of Tamils, and a major part of them, that is those belonging to the north and east, two and a half to three lakh people, refugee people in Tamil Nadu, almost half of them are in the camps. I think the number of camps is 104 or 114 or something like that. Almost half of them are outside the camps, but under police surveillance. And they have to register themselves as refugees, go to the police station, etc. Those in the camps, they get the government aid from the rehabilitation department of the Tamil Nadu government. They are neither citizens of this country nor recognized as refugees in the legal sense of the word. Even though these camps are called refugee camps, even though these people are called refugees, even though their demands are designated as refugee demands, under law, there is not a single refugee in India. They are not treated as refugees as per any refugee law. The treatment comes under the Foreigners Act, the Migrants Act and various other acts which are country specific. And under the Foreigners Act, they are here without valid travel documents. And that is the reason why they are held in camps, why they are kept under police surveillance, etc. This lawless attitude from the government helps the government to decide upon such issues on the basis of its political convenience. When it suited the convenience of the foreign policy needs of the Indian government, they were allowed freedom, they were even granted political rights. And each and every liberation militant movement of Sri Lanka had its office in Chennai. And when it didn't suit the convenience of the Indian government, they took severe action. They uh, almost treated them like criminals, etc. And when it suits the government of India, to change its policy towards these people, it easily changes. So here these refugees are just pawns in the game, foreign policy game played by India. That is, that is true.